so girls uh, i will just give an introduction of another important biomolecules that is proteins we have already studied about uh, we have already studied carbohydrates okay so another very very important uh, biomolecules are proteins so I will just give an introduction for today now proteins we know that they are the most abundant biomolecules okay biological macromolecules occurring in all the cells and all part of a cell in the body and they constitute about 60% of the dry weight of cells. So you can see it is a very huge amount. Okay, 60% dry weight of the cell is, is const the proteins they constitute about 60%. So these proteins they are considered as a very uh, important and also the most abundant uh, biological macromolecules as compared to other uh, biomolecules okay so they are the most abundant and they occur in great varieties and also you will see thousands of different kinds thousands of different kinds of proteins ranging in size from just uh, relatively small peptides okay to huge proteins okay huge polypeptides so the proteins they are not only of uh, they they not only they occur in great varieties but also they range in size from just small polypeptides to huge polypeptides with molecular weights in millions Okay, may be found in just a single cell so that is why we see that proteins we see that they are the most abundant biological macromolecules and they also exhibit the enormous diversity okay, enormous diversity in biological functions and Okay, not, they not only exhibit diversity in their uh, structure but also in their biological functions and chemically proteins we have already studied that they are unbranched polymers of amino acids right we have already studied this that they the proteins they are constituted of the amino acids and that is why we say that the amino acids they are the building blocks of proteins and also we know that these amino acids they are linked together through peptide bonds okay in a head to tail sequence from the carboxyl group to the amino group okay the many amino acids they are linked together to form a protein and the thus we see that proteins they are large molecules built up of these small units known as amino acids and a remarkable feature seen in protein is that using only these 20 different standard amino acids remember there are only 20 stand sorry it's 22 now only 22 standard amino acids are found in proteins so just think about this uh, out of only these 22 amino acids thousands and millions okay thousands and thousands of proteins are produced are constructed only from these 22 amino acids so a cell it constructs or it produces thousands of different kinds of proteins each of which has a highly specialized role or all, all these proteins which have been uh, constructed or produced in a cell they have specialized 
<clears throat> all of these they have specialized role in a cell and those are produced from only these 22 standard amino acids okay so here the all the proteins whether from the most ancient lines of bacteria or from the most complex forms of life they are constructed from a ubiquitous set of 22 amino acids which are covalently linked together in a characteristic linear sequence okay they are linked together in a linear sequence and they are produced in the cell these proteins are produced in a cell through only these 22 standard amino acids okay I'll, I'll just give a few examples okay not all all functions of the protein I'll just give a few examples so that we will understand you will understand the importance of proteins now the first example the first function biological function of protein is that they act as uh, bricks and mortars okay let us take a look at the few examples okay the function of proteins which act as those proteins which act as bricks and mortars now the first one first example is glycoproteins okay so glycoproteins if you remember we had we had already studied about these uh, molecules glyco why because these proteins they are linked to carbohydrates remember the glycoproteins they are they constitute both of carbohydrate as well as proteins now these proteins they involve in the synthesis of cell wall in plant cells and also bacterial cells and then uh, cell membrane in plants cell membrane in plants animals as well as bacterial cells okay so these glycoproteins they involve in the synthesis of cell wall in plant cells bacterial cells cell membrane in plants animals and bacteria and the next one we have another example is keratin now keratin is actually a fibrous protein Okay, keratin is a fibrous protein found in the nail, then the skin, and hair in mammals. So this keratin is an important protein in the epidermis. Okay, it has two main functions. That is, it adhere the cells to each other okay the function of keratin protein it adhere the cell to each other okay it helps the cells to adhere to each other and form a protective layer they form a protective layer on the outside of the skin okay in the epithelial cells the keratin proteins these proteins inside the cell they are attached to another proteins called desmosomes okay on the surface so their function is to help attached the to hold the cells with each other and form a protective layer outside the skin now another important proteins which fall on the disc glass are fibroin so these fibroin they are the structural proteins found in the found in silk and also found in spider web so spider web also it is made up of this type of proteins that is fibroin 
okay and we have another important proteins collagen collagen it is a structural protein in the extracellular space in you will find in the these types of proteins in the extracellular space in various uh, in the various connective tissues okay in the body so in the various connective tissues in the body and they are mostly found in fibrous tissues so these collagen proteins they their function is to promote the skin elasticity okay they promote the skin elasticity and also they hold together your bones and muscles okay they help in holding together the bones as well as the muscle cells and the second type of proteins okay the second biological function of proteins which is very important is they act as carriers okay that is the carrier protein so these are the types of proteins found which fall under this category which act as bricks and mortars now the next category that is those proteins which act as carriers so some of the examples of proteins which act as carriers is hemoglobin then we have myoglobin and albumin and also we have cerulo plasmin ceruloplasmin and transferrin so these are the important class of proteins which fall under this category okay under this class that is which acts as carriers now hemoglobin is a, you know you all know that it is present in blood it is a very very important protein which is involved in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide in mammals okay and myoglobin it is another important protein which in is involved in the oxygen storage in the muscles whereas albumin is a protein which is involved in the transport of fatty acids fatty acids hormones Okay, so fatty acids and hormones which are found in the blood bilirubin and we have uh, ceruloplasmin this protein it is involved in the transfer transfer of copper and we know that copper it is an important component of enzyme okay so ceruloplasmin it plays a role Okay, in the transport of copper which is an important component of enzyme so it is this ceruloplasmin it is a protein found in the blood plasma and we have transfer transferrin which is a protein involved in the transport of iron okay in the body now another class okay this i'm just giving uh, just the introduction we will do in detail from uh, next class so we have the another important class of protein so the next important function is that proteins as they act as biocatalysts all right as biocatalysts or what we call enzymes so these proteins which are of greatest interest to uh, biochemists they are the they are nothing but they are the enzymes which are the walker molecules of the cell all right these enzymes they served as promoters or as catalysts they served as promoters or as 
catalyst of different chemical reactions. So these enzymes, these uh, proteins which act as biocatalysts, they carry out the chemical, the biochemical reactions and also biochemical pathways such as uh, glycolysis, TCA cycle and other biochemical pathways, they are carried out with the help of these biocatalysts no, which are known as enzymes and all these reactions the biochemical reactions as well as the biochemical pathways are carried out with the help of enzymes now the next important function is that they act as defensive agent defensive agents so Proteins, they are also the major components of an immune system. They are major component of an immune system and proteins which act as immunoglobulins. Okay, immunoglobulins, they make our immune system and they protect our body from any undesirable invaders and also antibodies they are nothing but they are proteins that takes part in the immune system and for example proteins like a uh, thrombin thrombin and a uh, fibrinogen all right, proteins such as uh, thrombin and fibrinogen, they are, these are an example, okay, of proteins which are, act as defensive agents. Example, thrombin and fibrinogen which are involved in blood coagulation. So, the next type of proteins are those which act as metabolic regulators metabolic re regulators and signaling molecules so proteins which are known as or which are called as hormones they are the main regulators which control the metabolism of a cell and hormones example like insulin and also glucagon these hormones which are released from the pancreas they are the main regula regulators for glucose metabolism and also they carry signals for gene expression. Alright, so these are the proteins which act as metabolic regulators and as well as signaling molecules. Example, which these proteins which are produced by the pancreas, they are nothing but they are the hormones which take part in uh, which regulates the glucose metabolism and also they carry signals for gene expression and also other examples such as G protein all right these protein they involve in signal transduction and a number of receptor proteins they are also involved in signaling mechanism so other hormones like uh, this adrenocorticotropic hormone this hormone also is a very important uh, protein hormone produced from the pituitary gland which have specific effects in regulating the body metabolism so these are just few examples of Proteins which act as metabolic regulators and signaling 
molecules. Now the next type they are those which act as storage of amino acids. So what are amino acids we had already discussed in the previous chapter. They are those molecules they are nothing but they are the building blocks of proteins. So proteins they are made up of amino acids. Now that is why amino acids they can be obtained simply by breaking down proteins. For example, this protein ovalbumin. All right, this protein ovalbumin, it is a protein which acts as storage of amino acids. This can this uh, amino acids they can be obtained by breaking down this proteins. All right, so these are few examples. Okay, so we have another class of proteins which acts as poisons. Okay, which acts as poisons. And many proteins are found to be poisonous in nature. For example, the snake venom. Okay, the snake venom, it usually contains a protein which is called as alpha bungarotoxin. Okay, it contains this protein alpha bungarotoxin which is poisonous to any living being and we also have another poisonous protein that is resin this protein it is found in castard carter seed okay then we have avidin avidin is a protein found in raw egg and this protein it binds to a vitamin called biotin in the body okay so avidin it binds to a protein biotin in the body and we have another class that is proteins which acts as the uh, adhesion molecule okay we have proteins which acts as adhesion molecules now just from the name itself you can understand these the function of these proteins all cells in the plasma membrane they contain these addition molecules and so they are involved in cell contact okay they are involved in cell contact because they contain these addition molecules these proteins and some cells surface proteins like uh integrins okay Th these proteins surface proteins like integrins then cadherins and selectins all these protein molecules they act as adhesion molecules they help in the cell contact adhesion of one cell with another cell and the uh, another biological function of proteins we have antifreeze proteins so these proteins some of the proteins they prevent freezing okay they prevent freezing of the biological fluids example the lymph and the blood okay in the in the animals in the those animals which are present which are living in the arctic circle so in those areas we know uh, the these protein molecules which are present in their body they help in the they help to prevent the freezing of their uh, blood or the lymph they help to prevent the freezing of the biological uh, fluids in these animals which live in the arctic region okay so we see that uh, these are some of the important biological role actually uh, when we study about the different class of proteins classification of proteins this is one of the classification okay the classification which is based on the function of proteins the biological role of proteins so it is the first type of classification so according to their function the proteins they are uh, divided into these categories we have studied around 10 
okay the proteins which act as addition molecules as antifreeze proteins then we have which acts as bricks and mortars um, as uh, also as carriers then as enzymes all those they fall on the the first class okay that is the proteins the classification of proteins according to their biological role so when we study the classification uh, this first part since I had already mentioned now the biological functions of proteins uh, we w I will not explain again okay so from next class we will start with first before coming to the classification we will start first with the uh, structure of proteins okay structure of proteins that is the primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structure of proteins these are the different levels of structure of proteins.